Hello there again, my fellow learners. You are joining me here for some comments about the end of Aldous, Huxley, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. This is chapter 18, the last and climactic chapter in this dystopian story. And uh, at, at this point, John and Helmholtz Watson engage in a short conversation. I wanted to start by focusing on this statement of John's, I ate my own wickedness. He is just... Uh, come out of the bathroom having thrown up here, and he's intentionally purged himself. Now, he did not eat anything physical that was wrong, but he's referring to the civilization that he's eaten and his own wickedness. Now, he's particularly critical of uh, the desires of the flesh that this very indulgent society has encouraged him to feel and that he morally is not accustomed to experiencing. A little further along here, he finds himself uh, willingly isolated from the rest of society and its temptations, but uh, the place is not quite Spartan or stern enough for him, so he, he tells his conscience that uh, he will work very hard, even though it's a fairly comfortable surrounding, to, to, as he attempts this new lifestyle of self-discipline and, and purification. And in a passage that's reminiscent of a description of John early on the reservation where he wanted so to prove himself acceptable by the standards of that society, which, remember, he was an outsider there as well, making him fully the anti-hero, really, of the story, despite the appearance early that Bernard would be. Uh, he mimics that position on the cross, that sense of self-crucifixion, that voluntary crucifixion there as he sweats out for hours here and then calls out, you see, forgive me, make me pure. And again, he stands out as quite the different character because he willingly participates in this practice, this ritual of self-denial and willingly experiences physical and emotional pain and hardship, not like this indulgent society is used to. And when he says, oh, help me to be good, what does he have to be good about? John seems to be a very moral character. But remember, in this very permissive world of the world state, where, how shall we put it, anything goes, and temptations are quite to be expected, particularly by Lenina, whom we believe he had a genuine love for, and as he was confronted and tempted by her, he really didn't know how to respond to that. But even though he strikes her and insults her, he still is very much desiring her. So he continues to have these feelings as he's in isolation. And as we go down to later in the, uh, in the chapter, we find out that he was still haunted by the, the thought, impure thoughts, of Lenina. Well, he finds here this, this whip, and he uses it to, to chastise or discipline the flesh, that is, to try to eliminate those desires of the, f the flesh, those physical d desires. Now, as he continues to remember Lenina and his desire for her and periodically engages in this action with the whip, others seem to, to find out about this, and he kind of becomes this tourist attraction. And others come and, and hear other reports of, of him and, and more and more flock to, to see this strange behavior. and They're, they're fascinated and horrified at, by it at the same time. And you see here that they, they call out, we want the whip, and they start chanting in this, this rhythmic, hypnotic, communal chant. And as it's repeated uh, here, as they're engaged by this strange outsider, a, a young, beautiful woman comes out from the helicopter, and uh, he's immediately confronted by this, this beautiful woman and, and his own uh, rebellious flesh, as you see here, and, and uh, that, that strikes him to using the whip on her and himself all the, all the more. And that whips the crowd up into a frenzy. And notice this description of orgy-porgy several times. It reminds us of chapter 5, and we know how that, what that chapter includes. And then there's a dot, dot, dot here, indicating a, a passage of time. And we find out that it was after midnight when the last of the helicopters took its flight. 
Now, these helicopters would have uh, sprayed the crowd here. I think the police would have been involved and, and sprayed the crowd with a Soma mist. And we read here that John was exhausted by a long-drawn frenzy of sensuality. And you have to think carefully about what that's implying here, particularly in context with this reference to Orgy Porgy. And at first, he remembers the previous night with incomprehension and then suddenly remembers everything. He realizes what he participated in. Now that sets up the final description, a rather graphic, a subtle, but the other disturbing image of what John is driven to do. He's unresponsive. His feet are suspended above air as he twists. John has not successfully fought against the society. He even couldn't fight against its pull on his own desires, his own moral standards. So our anti-hero is a victim of this society, as often is the case of the anti-hero, showing us, according to some, these kinds of worlds, these dystopian worlds, are greater than any individual's power to make a change.